Good morning all, it's post bag, and this is a great big box full of integrated circuits. Now this has been sent to me by Derek Heath, so thank you very much Derek. Uh, Derek got in touch and said that um, he'd obtained these uh, via FreeCycle from a chap who was in the electronics industry, presumably for a long time. Um, there are some old chips and some even older chips in here, so let's get it open and have a look. So, how to do it, rip it, I guess. Hmm. And it seems to be a bottom and lid arrangement. So let's get this open. Right. Oh, wow. That's a lot of chips. And this... It's just one layer. It goes on and on and on. That's amazing. What's that? Looks like there's some quite old things here. A 6802, that's a CPU, if I remember rightly. 6402. Uh, what have we got here? 6264s. Six oh, they're RAMs. 6264s. Six, There's lots of 54, these are 54 HCTs. Uh, we've got 54F, uh, some 54 LS over here. And what are these? Just so much to look at. This is phenomenal. I'm going to have to peel this back layer by layer. My goodness, there's everything here. I'm going to have to go through some of this and sort of review what's in here because there's masses of it. What are these tin cans? These are amazing. MCT 1487. And so it goes on. Oh, and stuff in special little boxes. Should we open one? What are those? 9066, kind of 8 pin but very tall. How weird. These blue ones apparently are resistor packs. I'm going to have to do a lot of rummaging memory IC. 4118. Yep, it's a 4118. Actually, it's a MK4801. Fascinating. Well, there's so much in here, I can't really do it justice just by looking through it right now. 74111. Can't remember what that is. So I'm going to have to go and sort through some of this and uh, try and make some sense of it. So I've had a few days to uh, sort through some of these chips, and I've picked out what I think are some quite interesting ones. Um, here's a selection of TTL. Let's get in a bit closer. So here we have a 5490 and a 7490, but there's also a 6490. Now the 54 had a wide temperature range, often for military use. 74 is a standard uh, commercial temperature range, but there was for a short time um, an intermediate called the 64 series, but you don't see many of those around. So the 7490 is a decade and binary counter. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see the block diagram has a divide by two flip-flop or counter, and then a separate divide by five. Now, for divide by five, you need three stages, because two stages would only give you divide by four. But it's gated so that a certain combination of output resets it, so that it uh, divides by five and then resets. Now, I've also picked out these chips because of all the different logic families. We've got the original 7490, uh, for, for example, there. There's also here a 54L30. So the L devices are low power. There's one here, uh, a 54H04. The H devices are high speed. Uh, here they are on Wikipedia's list of logic families. Here's L. Um, it's one milliwatt per gate there. Um, Here's the H, so that's 22 milliwatts per gate, but it's much higher speed. The propagation delay 
is 6 nanoseconds instead of the 33 on the L device. Of course, this all culminated in the LS, which had kind of the best of both words. This is the low power shock key. S is just uh, shock key. Low power shock key had just 10 nanoseconds delay and only 2 milliwatts per gate. So here, for example, is a 74S04. That's the uh, shock key version that came before LS. But there are others. Look at this. ALS138. That's advanced low power shock key. And what's this one? 74AS153. Uh, here's another one. This is fast, a 74F74. And uh, now we come on to the CMOS versions. We've got the HCMOS uh, HC74 here. There's an HCT, which is a uh, high speed CMOS with a TTL compatible input. There's an HCT32 here. And there are some mixed family devices. This is a 74HC. 4050. So it has the functionality of the uh, 4050 from the 4000 series, but in a 74HC style package. And there's another one here that I've never seen before. This is a 74AC541. AC being another CMOS version, but different to HC. Now I've also found in this box quite a few uh, CPUs and EEPROMs. This is a, a 6800 CPU. Uh, Motorola, of course. Now these EEPROMs are old, very thin actually, ceramic style 1702s. And I've looked this up, the 1702 is 8 bits wide, but only 256 bytes. So there are five of these 1702s. Now they're obviously used for something, they've all been written on in pencil, which uh, this white ceramic I suppose is rather good for that. But yeah, so 6800 with 1702 uh, EEPROMs, very small EEPROMs. Now there's also a 6802 here, which I believe must be a variant of the uh, 6800. And uh, that's because in my Practical Electronics Microprocessor Handbook, on the back, it lists the 8-bit devices. Uh, there's the 6800 stroke 6802. So I guess they must be fairly similar. Now also marked on here is the 6809. Well, we have a couple of 6809s here and uh, they're the original ones and down the bottom here there's a 68A09 which I believe was the faster version. So yes it says here the 6802 was intended to directly replace the 6800 in new applications where its on-chip clock and RAM array would make it easier to use than the basic 6800 which was itself soon to be obsolete. Now, of the 6809, it says the 6809 is a very nice chip with most of the problems of the 6800 put right with lots of new features and facilities. But unfortunately for Motorola, it turned up too late. Now we've got a selection of old RAM chips. So here are a set of eight 2102s. Now these are just 1K by 1 bit. So if you wanted uh, a 1K byte memory, you'd need all eight of these. Let's take a quick look at the data sheet for that. Uh, so here it is, the 2102A, uh, 1024 bit by just one data bit. Now interestingly, this thing has separate data in and data out pins. Now normally these would be just called data. And depending on whether you uh, lowered the read or write line, I think there's a read not write line there. Uh, it would either be an output or an input, but these ones were split up for whatever reason. Now, also here, there are a fair number of these 2114s uh, from different manufacturers. Now, this is a 4K bit chip, but it's 1K uh, 4 bits wide. Let's look at the data sheet again. So, yes, this is a 4K bit chip organized as 1K by 4 NMOS static RAM. Now, you can see here that we've got uh, the address lines. The data lines here are combined so that the uh, data inputs and the data outputs are joined together. So these are DIO lines, input and output. And again, they tri state, the outputs will tri state if you're uh, writing to the chip. The outputs will then drive the data pins if you're reading from the chip. Now, this one, the 4118, uh, finally put 1K of memory by 8 bits wide, so 1K byte of memory in one chip. So this is a MOSTEC version, uh, 1K by 8 
static RAM, so 1K byte. Now what becomes important here is the little dash number at the end. So this one in the box that I've got, can't see very well, but it's a dash four. So it's this bottom one here, 250 nanoseconds access time. So you put the address lines to the address you want, uh, chip select and output enable, and it says that within 250 nanoseconds, the data will be securely and safely on the data bus. But if you want it faster than that for a faster CPU, then you have to go for one of these fast versions here. And the static RAM's just kept getting better and better. This is the 6116, which is a 16K bit or 2K by 8, so 2K bytes uh, static RAM. Uh, this one has that dash 4, so that's probably again 250 nanoseconds. And uh, I've just found a couple of uh, skinny 6116s. Uh, these look like they've been salvaged. They've got uh, sort of remnants of solder and the pins look like they've been cut short. But they probably were worth salvaging at the time to have a little skinny version of the 6116. Same number of pins, but in this skinny package. And uh, these 6264s are 64K bit static RAMs, uh, so 8K by 8 bits wide. Now again, the dash number here is probably actually in nanoseconds, so 12 is 120 nanoseconds, this one is 150 nanoseconds, another one there, 120. And uh, these RAM chips went, uh, as far as I remember, right up to the 6256, uh, which was four times as big again, 32K uh, by 8 bits, so half the memory map of a typical 8-bit microprocessor. Now I've also found what I think are some DRAMs, dynamic RAMs. Uh, these are 4264s, uh, that looks like 100 nanoseconds. These are 41256, so probably four times the size of these. Uh, 120 nanoseconds would be my guess with that dash 12. Now I think I read that a static RAM requires six transistors per individual uh, memory bit, whereas a dynamic RAM just uses one transistor and a capacitor because the data is not held for very long so these things had to be constantly refreshed and you either needed a DRAM controller chip or a CPU like the Z80 which had the uh, certain elements of the DRAM refresh circuit built into the chip.